Welcome back to Bookview Now, our coverage of the Los Angeles Times Festival of the Book on a very nice Sunday with the band playing in the background. You might hear that. And I'm joined now by Kwame Alexander. His new book is Booked. Nice to see you again. You as well, Jeffrey. We have talked to several times now, and it's always a great pleasure. So this one is, the last one we talked about was the crossover, focusing on basketball. Now we're into soccer. Yeah, we're into a different sport. Yeah. And uh, I was on book tour for the crossover. Yeah. And during the Q&A, which is my favorite part of the, you know, school visit. Yeah. This one kid said, can you write a book about soccer? And all the kids just started clapping. Yeah. And of course, soccer is the number one sport in the world. And I thought, why not? I had a relationship with soccer. A really good friend of mine played professional soccer. Mm -hmm. And so I spent a lot of time going to games and, and watching soccer. So I thought, why not? Now, I want you to explain this for people, what you're doing here. It's, it's, it's a book in poetry. Right. But is it a poetry book? Is it a, ver a novel in verse? What, what do you think you're doing? I'm, I, well, I think <laughs> what I'm do you think you're doing, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my dad. What do you think you're doing? Um, I'm writing a novel. You know, I'm, I'm setting out to write a story, yeah. a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah. It's hopefully a compelling story that happens to be told in verse. Yeah. And, ho and hopefully each poem on the page stands up. Yeah. But it's a story. And There's why is it in verse? Um, wow, that's a great... I think there are a number of reasons why it's in verse. Um, I love poetry. Yeah. I've been immersed in poetry since I was a kid. It's what I know. It's my comfort level. Um, there's so much white space on the page. It's not intimidating to the kids. Mm -hmm. You talk about bringing in readers and, and those readers who, who aren't interested or, or, quote, reluctant. Poetry is a way to bring them in. And so I think uh, you can deal with really heavy, heady, emotional moments. You can distill them down into very few words. And I think that's powerful, and I like to explore that. Are you, um, we've talked a little bit about this before, but are you sort of hiding the fact that it's in poetry? I mean, do you want the reader, the young readers, to say, oh, look, I'm reading a poetry book, or just sort of forget form? Yeah. Or... I do want them to think about that. Wow, this is poetry, and I like it. Mm -hmm. for the first 15, 20, or 25 <laughs> pages. Yeah. And then I want them to forget. Yeah. I want them to see how intoxicating and addictive and, and, and engaging poetry can be. But I want them to forget about it and realize this is a story, and this is a viable way to tell a story. Because you think about getting kids excited about, about reading and literature, mm -hmm. and sort of uh, you can build confidence with 10 lines on a page. Yeah. And you sort of use that as a bridge. So, yeah. And, and once they sort of forget, I mean, or once they don't really think about what it is they're reading, right. you're introducing them to different styles of poetry at the same time. Exactly. Right? Different styles of poetry, um, different topics and themes, and, you know, you, especially in book, mm -hmm. we're dealing with some pretty heavy things. Well, in the crossover, too. So I've got to sort of, you know, keep mm -hmm. you interested, excited, not too depressed, and sort of some redemption and some, mm -hmm. um, some thrill of a ride. And I think mm -hmm. poetry does that best. And do you write these as, uh, when you call it a novel, a beginning, middle, and end? Right. It's a story that develops in your head the way one would write a novel and then write it in poetry? Certainly. Yeah. yeah. It, I'm, I'm, and when I wrote... The well, what's the process? Well, the process, well, when I first started writing the crossover, I was writing linked poems. Yeah. You know, it wasn't necessarily thinking of a through line. Well, that's what I was wondering. And, okay. and, and it was horrible. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I see. mean, it was good poetry, yeah, yeah. but it wasn't compelling enough for it As to a be story. a story. Yeah. And so I had to go back and write a novel, write a story. Uh -huh. um, and then I had to go back again and sort of make sure each poem resonated and sort of followed the ingredients mm -hmm. of what makes a poem work on the page. So it's, I guess essentially I'm writing these books twice. Really? Yeah. And so this one, this one, you had the experience of the crossover, so you... So it didn't take five years. <laughs> <laughs> it took a little bit less time, because uh -huh. I had sort of figured out, you know, how to approach that process yeah. of yeah. writing it. Sports is the, clearly a way in mm -hmm. for you, you think, yeah. to reach. Who are you trying to reach, and why sports? Right. Well, I, I think sports are a great metaphor yeah. for life. Yeah. Um, I, I thought about what would I have wanted to read when I was a kid, and of course, for me, it was sports. I wanted mm -hmm. to read about... You know, the first book that hooked me, Jeffrey, was The Greatest by uh, Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. 400 pages of just, like, nonstop audacity and just, you know, poetry. Mm -hmm. Like a butterfly sting like yeah, a bee. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and boxing. Yeah. You know, and so sports are a way in for boys in particular. Mm -hmm. So let's figure out how to hook them in. And then, of course, you know, the, the books are sort of a, a trick because mm -hmm. they're not necessarily about sports. They're about family and right. life and relationships. Right. 
So this one, Nick Hall, uh, is the main character, right. right? And there's a point where I was just looking at and kind of laughing aloud, thinking about you, where he's complaining about his father having a case of verbomania, <laughs> right? <laughs> Right. Chronic verbomania. Chronic. That sounds disgusting. It sounds disgusting, but, um, well, what is, is it something you... <laughs> it's a crazed obsession with words. Yeah. I yeah. think this is probably the most autobiographical That's what I was of thinking. the books yes. that I've written. My dad made me read Funkin' Wagnalls. Do you remember that? <laughs> the encyclopedia. You could get it from Safeway, you know? And so I had to read the encyclopedia growing up. Quite, and, a, quite, a, quite a childhood, huh? It was horrible. <laughs> It was why I loathed words, you know? And, and so you ask, what does a word mean? And yeah. Because my dad was a, a Columbia PhD, and he's, he asked, what does, that word, what does that word mean, Dad? And he said, go look it up. So I had a, a hate relationship with dictionaries and, and encyclopedias, yeah. and I wanted to explore that. But then it became a love relationship. And then it became a love relationship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so it, I, it flipped all the way around, yeah, which yeah. is interesting. Yeah. Tell me about um, kind of catch me up from when we last talked. You're at you're at book festivals. You're very active. I mean, in addition to writing, right. you're active all over the place in reaching out to right. young people, especially, right? What kind of yeah. project. Well, I think that poetry is more than putting a pen or pencil to paper. Yeah. I think that writing is more than just sitting down in a in a, in a cafe or in a room by yourself yeah. and coming up with ideas. I think you have to sort of have some. You have to live an authentic life to be able to have something authentic to write about. Yeah. And it's important to me to get out and interact with young people and share my my love of poetry mm -hmm. and and share with teachers, you know, how poetry can transform their kids' lives. That's as much a part of the writing job career for me as it is for, mm -hmm. for the actual writing, mm -hmm. and I love it. Yeah, so I so what is, I just saw this. Ah. Tell me about this, page to stage writing workshop. Yeah. What's this? For, for nine years, I taught K through 12 students around the country how to write and publish books. Mm -hmm. There was a workshop called Book in a Day. It was a mm -hmm. six hour intensive workshop. We did it in 76 schools. And after the Newberry, um, I had the opportunity to work with Scholastic on a project, and this was the project I thought about. How to get teachers um, uh, thinking about the writing workshop in a different way. So not just writing, but actually getting your students to publish, and then showing them how to present their words. Mm -hmm. So it's writing, publishing, and presenting. And the Page for Stage workshop is all of that in one kit. Mm -hmm. Videos, you know, uh, of me show, sort of modeling these techniques, and a manual so, so teachers can do it. And I guess it's also another way for me to be in every classroom and not be in every classroom because <laughs> I'm only one guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, were, you were just telling me as you sat down here about coming to Los Angeles for your first book signing, but it was more of a, it was, it was literally a do-it-yourself, huh? It was. It was DIY. Yeah. I mean, it was 1995. Um, I had three book signings scheduled. It was my first book, a book signing in a, in a gazebo Marina Del Rey. Yeah. Borders, remember Borders? Yes, uh, of Borders course, yeah. in Westwood yeah. and a church. And so those were my three events. And I remember, uh, one thing that I remember that's really funny is that at Borders, um, they had stocked maybe 30 copies of the book. And I thought, man, I've really got to make sure those books sell. So the few friends I had coming to the store, I had cleared out my savings account and given them money to go and then buy the books. And so they bought every book. <laughs> and so Borders was like, who is this poet from Virginia who sold out of his, 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 his uh, questionable love poetry? It wasn't that, even that good. And they asked me to come back. And so I knew that that was sort of a way to sort of lay the foundation because I wanted to be in this business for a while. I knew yeah. it was a business. It was art and commerce. You, you've always approached it that way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's, that's growing up with my father who was a publisher and an academic and yeah. who sort of taught me to yeah. walk that, that line. Yeah. Well, things seem to have changed. I haven't seen you at uh, events here, but in other places, I, I walk around and I see the, a long line of people, and I right. say, who are those people in line for? And Kwame Alexander. Well, Jeffrey, it's, it's, That's I, nice, it's huh? 23 years of work, and it's, it's a great feeling. Yeah. It's a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So what's next? What are, you, what are you working on now? I'm trying to decide whether this next book is going to be a prequel or a sequel to the crossover. Ah. Uh -huh. And I think my publisher would like it to be a sequel, but it has to be real. So I've got some ideas. I figured out what a prequel would be. I haven't figured out if what a sequel would look like. So I'm working on that, mm -hmm. trying to figure that out, and just traveling uh, around the world. My family and I just got back from Shanghai. 
Really? Um, this reading is all part of your the crossover tour. Yeah. Um, kids around the world are connecting with it, so more traveling. That's great. All right, the new book is booked. Kwame Alexander, nice to talk to you again. You as well. Thank you. Jeffrey. Thanks so much. Thank you.